So, how's it going? How are things? How has playing been? Tell me everything. <laughs> it's going, uh, it's going okay. Um, I think, I'm trying to think of what happened between now and last week. Um, um, the, so I went to Mango in Progress the day after we talked. Mm -hmm. Um, and the that tournament went pretty well for me. Um, I can actually, I guess I could probably send the VOD. Um, I played Bobby Big Balls in Winners, mm -hmm. and uh, I played really well. I actually think uh, part of me feels like if I did not kill myself at zero in game one, I would have won the set, and that felt good. Like I just think I was doing a lot of like really strong stuff. And mm. felt nice. Um, That's exciting because he, he's really good. Like, I've he's what top thirty ish right now, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like he, a really a good one. So I'll, I'll find the timestamp here. Um, yeah, like this game one, I think I'm playing kind of amazing. Honestly, it was felt really good. Um, even though I lost, I was like actually pretty happy. Um, cause I just felt like I played well. I feel like when we uh, play to our, like when we play cl really, really close to our level, like if we have like a, a set where we're just firing on all cylinders and everything, like it's really, it's really hard for us to feel like that bad about the outcome, even if we lose. Um, that's my theory of the case. I think a lot of times when we're upset about losing, it's just that like, we don't like how we played. Um, yes. because we're not feel, we don't feel like we gave it we we were really able to like give it a fair shake. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um I think that and then this set this set I think I just played good. Yeah, other than the SD. And then game 2, I think I got shaky last stock. Like even with the SD, it was super super doable and I think um there's still that pressure of like last stock situations against like players of this caliber that i think is like uh that i'm trying to sort through mm -hmm. but i wasn't like too in my head like when i was last stock like i think it was like i felt pretty confident i don't think i was super shaky it was just it, i felt it a little bit and then he's still like a good you know he's still a great player and he got his opening and um he won <laughs> No, I no, I think that all makes sense. So like the impression I get is that like you're not really in your head, you're like um you're playing well, you're confident, you're feeling good, and all it takes is just like a second. You have like that flicker of like, yo, and then you like deal with it. But then like he gets the opening and that's like all it takes, right? That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. Like, I think that I lost to um like, when I was coming up, I think I lost to V Wins and Bam, like, the former 1 and 2 in Canada. Like, mm -hmm. um, I lost, like, game five sets to them, like, twice each, with where, like, it was just that. Like, I realized that, like, in game four versus Bam, like, if I win that, I win. Um, game mm -hmm. five versus V Wins, um, if I win that, I win. Like, it's... You're all it takes, like it's just a moment of like not even like for the full for the full stock, but just like a moment that is enough to give them their opening, and yeah, they take it. But because but the reason is is not because I was bad for doing that. It's just they were good for not, like they were able to like not flinch even when they're that yeah. close to the finish line. And you know what? It, it's just like a skill. But before we noticed that they like I bet you had that like kind of hanging. Out. You're right. You are playing well. Jesus. Um. You were pl like that was hanging over you probably for l larger proportions of the stock. I'd argue, I'd probably suspect, right? Like yeah. it's just there, like right when it starts. Yeah. So this is what I mean. Like this is where the improvement comes from because it's not that it ever goes away completely, but we like get it down more and more and more because we get better at dealing with it. The nerves mm -hmm. never go away. Like the reality yeah. is, like they're always gonna be. As long as you care about the game and you care about how you do and you enjoy having playing it, you're there's always gonna be there. Yeah, oh, that's the part where I kill myself. I I didn't like. I wasn't trying to, like, I knew that. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I, 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 this is just like a miss input. Like I, I literally just like miss my jump to get back to stage. Cause I think going out to like clean this up, I think maybe more cognizantly, I need to just take the ledge. Yeah. But I think ultimately like this was like a pretty low risk situation. And I literally just forget to jump, like not forget. I miss my like jump input and, uh, and just like fast fall and die. Uh, which sucks, but I pull it back. Like, I think I take the next stock and... No, you're playing like, great. Still... Like, your spacing is so good. Like, the way you're controlling your, the, the like, his um, aerospace using your fair is, like, super, super textbook. Like, this is exactly what I would tell somebody if they were trying to, like, learn this matchup. It's like, you get into the spot where it's awkward for him to laser because you're too close. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, if he tries to, like, approach you, you're still able to, like, threaten him with fair, and then you just kind of, like, weave around that in a, sli in a slightly further back distance to, like, make him sweat, and then mm. you just do your thing. Like, you just make it, you just see what he does, and if he does, if he sets up his, like, laser spacing, you know, we use the platforms, we use our ground movement, we, like, kind of, like, cre recreate, like, the magic spot. Um, yeah, no, this is exactly what I would tell someone to do. This is all very, very, very good. Thanks. Yeah, it felt... It felt like a lot was coming together in this game. I've been like really trying to work on my like speed and my nares at a shield in this matchup too, because of uh, stuff Zane was telling me. And uh, I think I oh I, that was beautiful. I get, well, I get a lot of mileage off of nair at a shield in this set, so I felt good about that too. Honestly, like we need to combine Samus's nair up be out of shield with Sheik's nair at a shield, so it's just like you get the invincibility, but you still get the good clean hit from Samus. Like that's what this game needs for balance. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be fucking insane i feel like yeah we, like basically describe bowser's up b i think that if we give about ba chic bowser's up b that's probably not okay <laughs> yeah that would <laughs> have ended on good evil. authority <laughs> um yeah so this i mean this set was you know i lose uh it's fine like i wasn't like, too I honestly just walked away from this. Like I was like mildly disappointed because it felt so winnable. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I was happy because I was like, man, like this matchup is something that I think I had been, I am struggling with a bit. Um, and uh, I've been trying to put some work into it and it felt like there was a lot of good stuff. So I gotta say your punish game and like how the stuff like I imagine this is also like a Zane thing that he probably told you but like the way you like back up here so that you're hitting him forward to like mitigate the interaction of the um slide off here mm -hmm. is super 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 smart like that up here was extremely well done it's like a it's a bit of a read but like if he rolls to the other edge like you're not really unhappy for being in the spot you're in because then you just pressure with your aerials anyway and then mm -hmm. he and he you're pressuring the side of him that's like close like you're pressuring him outwards to the edge which is where falco mm -hmm. dies anyhow so no, no no this is like your gameplay here is like very very cleaned up like there's not much that's being wasted here which is very good like, that's uh -huh. great yeah mm -hmm. so well as i watch this i definitely see like some some things that like make sense for us to like potentially like talk about like we had the measuring distance thing um, the other one I'd kind of, like, question here is, um, how do I put it? I really like how you're doing your, I really like how you're doing your baits in general and how you're, like, making a point of getting into the spots, the spots where, like, you're able to, like, threaten him from below. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious as to what you think, like, the role of Sheik's back air is in this matchup. Um, I think it's a tool to, like, kind of... I I usually see it as something to like threat safely threaten him while he's on platform while like not being directly under him. I think I could probably back air more often. I think like instant back air would be good when he is like on the ground and approaching me. I think me um something I've been I don't think I have to do this against Bobby as much cuz Bobby is a very he just like plays very aggressively, right? Like I think Bobby is a really like uh aggressive player. And I think against that style of Falco, like, um, I think you might remember me complaining about feeling frustrated about how um, I felt like I was losing to, like, really bad Falco players who were just, like, waiting for me to run at them and then 
down like they'll hold down and then they'll just like wait to see if they get something and then they'll run away again and we kind of like repeat that um i think bobby just doesn't do that so like he's a player whose play style like really fits the way that i excel at the game like um mm -hmm. interacting like heavily and like scrapping i think that like goes pretty in my favor but against falco players who like play a little more like disciplined and patient or who like are always double jumping away um i st i've been trying to like play the platform more like we had talked about a long time ago and zane was also encouraging of and like back air and threaten and bait from the platform um yeah yeah no all of that all of that makes sense the only thing i'd add to that is that back air is like not just like a good tool for like like attacking people from the platform or like attacking him on the platform like, it's also one of your best tools for, like, dealing with these, like, high trajectories. So, as an example, I guess he is technically on the platform, so maybe this is what you're getting at. But, like, remember, when he comes off the platform with his down air, if he comes at, like, yeah. more of an angle than this, where you are, to where you are, then he's just going to land on the platform anyway. So, your back air's incredible disjoint works really well for, like, guarding this line, basically. Because if we think about where Sheik's back air hits, it's kind of like this, right? And then mm -hmm. there's, like, a big disjoint here. So, like, because of that, we can kind of use it to attack him, like, in these spots. The other thing is, is because of that big, big disjoint, if we're over here and he's doing, like, a top-to-side platform transition, like, we can put it here um, if we're facing the right way. There's, like, a lot of things you can do with it. Remember, like, well, actually, let me ask you. Um, why do you think I want to attack him more when he's, like, moving around those platforms? Why do you think that's a priority of mine? You just want to. I I would say you want to challenge and interrupt his movement, like interrupt his rhythm. And you're also you're tacking on percent, which is valuable because eventually when you interact later, he will be. It'll be harder to CC. Um, but also like I feel like slowing down Falco in in like the way they want to move. It, mm -hmm. challenging their movement out of like hit stun is like really important i think agreed but there's one more very very simple thing that we're like overlooking all of everything that you're like saying is true but remember every time he moves from a platform to another platform like if he goes from here to here what happens when he hits here um wait if sorry if i'm am i still in the same spot like let's say you fall like instead of shielding let's say you're like standing here okay yeah. And he falls to that platform. Yeah, what happens when he reaches it? Mm. What happens whenever you land? He's in... Is he Is he in, like, an animation or, like, lag? Yeah, four frame auto cancel. Every time. Which means that he... Wait, just from landing? Yep, just from landing. You're not actionable on frame one. There's always four frames of auto cancel landing, unless you're Pichu, then it's two. Shit, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, Fuck. so this is. So, oh, no, no, no. This is why we're covering this. Because, like, what this means is if you get into a spot where he is not able to, like, where you where you have the hitbox advantage in air to air, he's in a lot. He has a really awkward situation to deal with because he can't really land. He, normally, the, the plan here is land here passively. And not mm -hmm. deal with the hitbox. But if he's going to incur penalty for that, then you have it. You're at advantage. Like you effectively have juggle state here. You know, like it's not as good as like, you know, when they're above you on like FD or something and without their jump or whatever. But you have like a form of juggle state here because of the you know because you can reach him. You can mm -hmm. reach the spot where he can wants to land, like, and your move beats is out. So. I would say that, like, a big dynamic of this matchup that we're not really playing to is, like, what happens, like, when he starts to get, like, when he starts to get about here, I would say. Um, like, when he leaves the platform, it's worth considering, like, what do we do about this airspace? Like, from here to, um, the, pla from here to the platform, this is a spot that's generally good to think about, because if you put your back air here, like, above it, above where he wants to land... Well, he crashes into it, but if he double jumps away, then, like, you know, he then has to work with his double jump. Like, it's not like he just gets out of there unless he wave lands. Um, so this can be a way you can pin him. And then if he doesn't, if he attacks and tries to, like, beat you out or, like, double jumps in advance to, like, try to bait you, you know, you have other things you can do. 
Um, I would say that like being able to move between this spot and like this spot is really important for that reason because it means he has to pick whether or not he's attacking the ground or the platform. Okay. Yeah. Um. Does that make sense, or Wait, does could this... you could you explain the ground part again, like the the last part again? Sure. So if you're here and you're able to threaten this spot with your back here, where he wants to go, yeah. the other thing he can do is attack you where you are. Okay. Yeah. But you have the option by being the character on the ground to like move all over the place. Just... Okay. Yeah. Right. Because you can like you can short hop, you can then wave land on the land like fast fall wave land to get out of the way of him. You can dash yeah. dance, which still keeps access to like the back here you're covering this with. Like you have a lot going on down here. Yeah. Um, and I think that like treating the moment where they're about to touch a platform that they want to move to as an opening, if as long as it's reachable, that's a really good thing to do because it allows you more flexibility. It it just allows you more threats in different positions. Like it allows you to be threatening when they're just changing where they are. Um, mm -hmm. And that's really strong. Yeah, and this will apply sense. And this will apply to every single character. Like this applies to Peach, this applies to Jigglypuff, applies to Marth, applies to it. You, you pick a character, this this is an this is a thing that's like that comes up. Mhm. Mm yeah. Mm okay. Does that make sense, or do you need to, or do you have any need any clarifying? Do you, have, do you need anything clarified, or does this make sense more or less? Uh, this makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna continue the match then. All right. Oh wait, we can go back to full speed. That's kind of what I mean. So you see, like here, so. He's mm -hmm. above you. Yeah. And then he's going to go up to this top platform in a second. So what I'm saying is, is that, like, if he goes up to this top platform, we want to, like, structure our dash dance. So, like, we want to, like, make sure we're not going into his, like, approaching down air zone if we don't have yeah. to. So we would stop, like, back here and then bait here. Because if he goes up yeah. here, we can just jump up and hit him anyway. Um, and if he goes away from us, then we can follow behind him. He has tricks though, like that that illusion was cool, um, but yeah, like those tricks are a little are generally pretty telegraphed because you can like see the illusion happening. So it's like okay, mm -hmm. he got he it's like okay, he got there, but if he doesn't get there, then yeah. Uh, yeah, I made a mistake there. What were, what were you, I take it we were just going for needle grab with those needles? Um, what am I doing here? Let me see. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to like land on the plat. Mm. I like I wanted to like drop down. I, uh. What do you think about just like needling after the, like needling after the back air? Because they usually back up anyway, or like like here. Hands. Yeah. No, I think that's great. I I think I should, yeah yeah definitely that would be good. Yeah, like we just shoot them on the ground basically, and we just take the eighteen damage, and we're like okay, like you know the hard part is done. We now just need to hit anything. Because the other thing is, is, like, they usually don't, like, block after they get grazed by the aerial. Because if they block, they're just kind of, like, conceding to grab anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, so they're usually going to do anything else. And then, yeah, needle ha Needles happens to be very good against anything else. I can see, I can see exactly the emotion. It's like, I did well, relatively speaking, but man, like, that was totally winnable. Yeah glad you showed me that so what do you want to like I th what do you want to work what do you think you would be good to work on today because i think that like you've got i think that cleaning up the low percent game especially after you kill falco like after you kill someone i think that could be worthwhile because i don't really see you throw straight needles very often so figuring out how to get mm -hmm. that how to do that more effectively would definitely be good okay straight um, needles and yeah like, after you kill someone. So you kill them, they come back, you've got your full needle stack. Like, what do we do in that, like, early game um, to kind of get out of the early game? That would be something that I would be interested in um, exploring. 
Yeah, that's interesting because I think I actually used to do that a lot. I think that would be the only thing I did. And then I think that being the only thing I did, it, it turns it into a habit in my head that I need to like get rid of, you know, so then I've stopped doing it. But yeah, mixing it up would be good. Sure. It's um, like, it's a pretty small thing. So maybe let's find, let's think about something else that we can do too, if you'd like. Um, what's an area of your game you want to see improved? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think one thing I haven't actively addressed, but I've been thinking about is like better movement out of CC and also like how to threaten CC. I think like my ability to like CC actively and then move out of CC is it's just very limited right now and i want to work on that um i think it would help me you know it helps in a ton of matchups but especially against like marth um uh, i feel like against marth against fox um i want to work on that uh okay. the, yeah just like the comfort of like threatening cc more often because i think there's a lot of situations against fox and marth where i'm getting like knocked up or like out by hits that like don't have to do that to me and i know like a ton of like threatening marth um especially as the parts i play like continue to get better um is is being able to threaten that properly um sure i also i have a fox player to like a good fox player to play against and like um 10 okay. minutes okay five ten minutes that we can play against and let's I go in, that would be let's go into direct and we can pr we can tinker around with these with these cc timings okay because that seems like a productive use of like our and time. then uh yeah i think that would be good and then the only other thing i wanted to bring up was um hmm the the end of mango in progress was good um I ended up beating Deez, the Sheik player, uh, nice. for the first time in a while, which was really nice. It felt really affirming because I've been like working on that matchup with advice he's given me. So beating him felt good because I've gotten so close the last few times, and this time I think I won like really solidly. Um, and then I went to I went to Verdugo last night, and uh, oh, sorry, can you remind me of your code? What it starts with? Uh, L U I G. Yeah, right. Um, uh, yeah, it, I went to Verdugo and I did pretty bad last night. And I think a lot of it had to do with like focus and attention. And, um, um, I guess I don't know if I have like anything like new I want to discover there, but, uh, yeah, it just felt like it, it was just a bad tournament. Gotcha. Um, okay. So, so, yeah, in this matchup, like, just, like, t I think my issue is, like, a lot of the times I can, like, t I can CC the move, but I'm, like, my ability to, like, act out of it and, like, grab out of it are either, like, delayed or inaccurate, and, like, I think I'm just doing it improperly. Yeah, so there's, it's, so, okay, so hold, so jump and land. So you see that spiky air that's mm -hmm. right there? Now, I'm going to hit you, and you'll notice it's the same spiky air, right? Yep. So that's because you're going through the four frame, you're going through your auto cancel landing lag. Uh, that's basically how it works. So remember, it's four frames. So it's about half yeah. of, it's like on the the frame before your forward tilt would hit, that's when you're, that's when you gotta move. There you go. That's so interesting. Okay, so. Hold that, yeah. So here, we'll do down tilt. You can go faster. Remember, it's like. Oh, I always okay. do. I do that so much too. So again, with it, like so, if with dash attacks and forward smashes, um, if you input A after tapping side within the first three frames, it'll forward smash. On the fourth onward, it'll dash attack. So if you're trying to CC dash attack or boost grab, you have to give yourself another beat after going forward. Okay. okay, it's the same. It's the same amount of time though. So I will do. I'll do double down tilt because like that should be like beatable by grab. Okay, you got the dash, so we just have to then get the. There you go. 
Oh. <laughs> I mean, you still got me. Yeah. So this makes a little more sense? Yes. I think it's just the timing is really difficult uh, for me. Especially to beat out the second down tilt, which is like, I'll just eat the second down tilt a lot. Something you can do, slide your stick forward into the forward down notch. Like, while, um, you're, while you're Okay, crouching. yeah. Um, and then slide it slightly higher, like a, a touch higher. There you go. So you can buffer walk out of crouch at two. Like by, oh, I see. And then it like, it makes that stuff easier. Oh, interesting. Okay. Cool, huh? Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, I do that a lot. Oh, are you holding? the grab is like, okay, the yeah. grab is like short. So are you holding down, only down when you're crouch canceling or down plus forward usually? I'm usually just holding down. You want so remember, crouch cancel reduces knockback to by to two thirds, but it's still your trajectory still matters. So you want to do down forward. You want to like lean what? into the thing you're doing, or against Fox Nair, you want to pull away from it to avoid the shine. Oh, see how you keep so much wow. closer. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Here, like watch. What the fuck? Yeah, it all matters. What? That's like, so funny. I'll buffer, I didn't know. I'll buffer spot dodge after this, so we can try that. So, but like you can see how much closer you steal, like how much closer you stay, stay to me, like with this. That's so crazy, actually. Yeah, because a lot of the time I feel like I'm just like being knocked away a little too much, and then I'll like try to follow up with that grab or move, and then I'll be short. But this keeps you so much closer. And with the, when you, the thing is, do you have a fob or do you use OB, OEM? I have a goom wave actually. Oh, um, are those are those adjustable with like notches and stuff? I think I I honestly I bought this like a few years ago and I have no idea what it actually does. I uh, just it's so maybe. So with my fob, what I've done is I've configured it so that like the down forward notch on both sides um does walk, buffer walk, shield drop, and um forward plus fast fall. Um, with like diagonal fast fall basically. So I find out like that helps like clean up inputs. It's also like spectacular cheating, but we decided this is fine, so like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whether he, whether he, he, you have morals against that or not, but yeah. Until they tell me I can't, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I need to dash. Okay. I would, uh, it's okay to just like, yeah. Actually, no. I just yeah, just just do it. Just try, just try it. Uh, try, try whatever. Can definitely go quicker than that, but it's good that you didn't go too late. Yeah. Cause like, sorry, too um early. Cause early is usually worse. That was good. That was like perfect. That was very good. Oh no. I, I like to like watch like the spiky air because it's like when you can dash out of an auto cancel okay so I think that this is interesting this helps I think uh, so one thing I also struggled with last night is um I do think my opponents like played pretty well but I, I you know I had a very bad tournament uh, result last night and one thing that I noticed or I've never had a way to like describe this I guess is um, sometimes when I play like maybe it'll just be an off day it feels like when I'm like trying to fast fall I won't fast fall at all um, I'm like missing dashes and then getting like just stuck in place and then as a result I'm like missing a lot of my punishes and um, I that was like really present in like all the sets I played yesterday and I ended up losing a Sheik Ditto to this guy of like never lost to before, which felt kind of bad. And, um, uh, and I was more just like not frustrated by feeling like I'm like losing primarily because of my movement and like I'm getting stuck. But then someone explained to me, um, that, 
uh, it's probably because I'm trying to like move too soon and I didn't really know like I'm trying to like hit the dash or like the input too quickly um, and then I'm getting stuck because I'm missing the buffer and I was like oh that makes a lot of sense because like you know part of me feels like my controller is broken but that's not true because it's it's just not and yeah. um and I was trying to focus like afterwards I was trying to like focus on like relaxing and like like waiting a beat and like not being as intense um which was which was interesting I've never had like an actual answer to like why I'm playing that way uh which which felt good I imagine so did you ever have the thought of like man I shouldn't be losing this this guy is like not that good pop up no not really like I, I, not last night at least I felt like um I actually felt like both of them were playing like fairly well as someone who's played like uh, at least the two sets that are coming to mind um the the first set I did feel that way actually so sorry uh, there were three there were three main sets mm -hmm. and the first set was against Puff uh, CJ who I think I've like successfully conquered in a way like like in my head I have conquered this guy in that I have like I know how he plays I know how I need to play to win and I think I came into the set like very apathetically and his whole gimmick is that he can like rest you out of like insane positions like mm -hmm. he's out of any puff I've ever played he is more rest heavy and has like more rest setups than like anybody I know and the way you beat this guy is you just play like really slow and disciplined and he has basically like his neutral is not very good and you just, you just let him go for that. You just let him go for like the combo starters or rest start like the com the things that set up the re that lead to the rest, and then you just punish them. Um, hit start. We're gonna. I'm gonna. I know that the guy's coming. Gonna be ready soon. But I want to show you one thing. One last thing with crouch right. cancel. Uh -huh. With this fuzzy, with this fuzzy little muffin. So I want you to crouch cancel and hold away on this one. Okay. Oh. Because it avoids the shine. Oh my god, I go so far. Right? I, oh, sorry. What the fuck? This is crazy. Right? And then if you at and now that you've got some damage, if you hold just down, that's enough because you'll just like Yeah. Oh, I mm, I see. Yeah. That's the only thing I wanted to show, but like I think your friend is should be ready, right? Like the fox player? Yeah, let me that's okay. Yeah. But I, I, I just wanted you to see the difference because, like, people think that crouch cancel is just, like, you know, hold down, go nowhere. And, I mean, it can be that. Yeah. Ha but it doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, no, that, that helps a ton. Hold on. Uh, right. These things. Mm-hmm. Why, why do you say that helps a ton, though? Um, because I think... The, I think about the mistake or the way I'm messing up my like CC follow up a lot of the time, and I think this will make a difference in that scenario. Like by inputting this way, there's a lot of situation. There's still a lot of situations where I'm like not CCing at all, or like I'm CCing like uh, too too late, um, mm. or telegraphing the CC. But for the times I'm intending on CCing it, it should be in my mind like should be working. Like, this enables me to get the follow-up that I'm looking for easier. And I think that is somewhat somewhat comforting. Yeah, like, you, ha you have, like, you have a range in terms of, like, how close you finish, how far you finish. And usually it's better to finish close, because usually CC is um, a countermeasure against um, long moves, not small moves. But there are some small moves where we use it against quite a bit, like Fox is an air, and... Um, yeah, like, knowing how we can then deal with the shine thereafter is, like, that's... And, like, also prevent him from being able to, like, cross us up with it as, a, like, a solution. Yeah, like, these are all very good things. Sick. This is... Yeah, I'm excited to try this. Honestly, like, more people should crouch cancel. Crouch cancel is a great mechanic. Don't tell the Samus players... Don't tell the Peach players, um. but, like... <laughs> don't tell them they said that, but... Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's, like, thank goodness we have this. Um, yeah, I do think it's a good part of the game, ultimately. Mm -hmm. It's just annoying early on. Okay, I messaged, uh, messaged him. Oh, he's ten minutes away. 
Okay. We still. Um, In the meantime, do you mind if I try queuing like a set? Or, or sorry, what were you gonna say? I was gonna, I was gonna, gonna suggest the literal same thing. So no, we're on the same page. Um, why don't you queue a set on ranked, and we'll see what we can get. Here, do you want? I'll uh, boot up my spectator ID. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then let me just turn the monitor back on, and we're groovy. Spectate. Uh, and it would be my code. Do you have my code, or do you need me to send it? I have it. Perfect. It confirm. It says it's connected. Yep. I'll search. Perfect. Yep, you popped up. This will be good. Yeah, I, so at least I think the... Because I was kind of bummed last night. I was just like... I... I don't like when I go to tournaments and I feel like I lose because I wasn't like engaged or like trying hard enough. I feel like I was like, what have I done? Like I've sort of like wasted my own time by not engaging with like my routine and like making sure that I'm like amped up and taking it seriously. And, but I think I, I tried to focus on like what my takeaway was, was like, oh, I have a new piece of knowledge about like why my movement gets like that sometimes. And that helps. Um, and I think that's something that will like stick with me. And uh, and then I felt eager to play again today, so. Yeah, that's this is the thing. So if you're treating it as a learning opportunity, remember, we're not allowed to, like, get... We have unconditional permission to make mistakes in the if we're in the learning phase because we can't learn without mistakes. So it, if you decided that this is a learning opportunity, good on you for turning that around. The other thing I'd kind of comment on is... If we put this in perspective, what did we lose to? We lost to the Sheik Mirror, which is, like, the most insane punish-heavy matchup in the game of the top current top tiers, and Jigglypuff. You mm -hmm. know, the Death Touch character. <laughs> so it's like... So we played bad, and we lost to, like, the two characters that, like, murder us on contact. Like... Is this, like, this... <laughs> I feel yeah. like as far as, like, wacky losses go, um, not even wacky, but just as far as, like, you know, getting upset goes, like, these are the two char If there's two characters that are going to do it, it's these two. Yeah, that's what... I was also trying to remember that, actually. And be like... I think I'm trying to stray away from this idea that, like, just because I lost early um, doesn't mean I'm, like, suddenly, like, worse or, like... a terrible player because of what happened one week i'm just trying to be like oh yeah rough lost two best of threes let's play again kind of deal mm -hmm. clean when you come off the top platform like to do the waveland over for the um bat like the come off back air and stuff try mm -hmm. to like drift to be outside of the shine out of shield range a shine out of shield and crouch cancel shine range. Or do, like... Yeah, just, like, we want to s still have good spacing. So if that means you, like, fast fall slightly later, that's fine. It's more important that we don't give him a free shine at some point. That we didn't have to. You... When you said... Oh. So you come when off... When you said top platform, do you mean the side platform as well, or... Just in general, when we... Just in general, when we come down on Falco... We want to try to like drift away from him if po like if possible when we're doing like neutral, to like make sure that we're not giving him free shine out of shield. That's all. It's more important from the top platform because like there's more like travel time, so there's more time for him to get ready. From side platforms and short hops, it's not quite as important, but like it's still important. Oh, I should just take a lunch. I think you should have actually fared. I think the down smash was too laggy. Like, okay. Because the down you you went for down smash instead of like forward tilt fair, you had you were committed for longer, um, and didn't have as much time to set up the edge guard. Okay. So like finding ways of like finishing with fair is like a, is something that I think that would add a lot of efficiency for you. Like, okay. I really only down smash when like I think I down smash below like twenty. And there's um sorry, around like twenty to like uh, Down Smash I just basically use it when that when it ha when Fair doesn't have enough knockback to do anything. Like the second that Fair like sends like decent distance, the efficiency advantage makes me want to finish with it almost every time if I can. 
Okay. So, like, really below, like, 50, I don't see why I'd ever, like... No, um, after 50, I don't... Like, I'd almost always want down um, the fair instead of... See how much more, like, equipped you are to, like, do that? Yes. Yeah. It's just so much cleaner. The transition is so smooth. Like, and it's a small thing, but I don't think you would have been allowed to miss the first needle for covering, um, covering that, like, lower jump mm -hmm. had, you, had you done the down smash. Like, you'd still, yes. get, you'd still be able to go for the edge guard, but you wouldn't have been able to go for, like, two reps of it, basically. Okay. Tech in place. Close enough. Oh, nice dash dance. I love that. Oh. Yeah, should have been aware. If you know he's going to up B, if he has to up B and you've already landed from the needle, why not just run off and fair him? Oh, yeah. It's Falco. I don't have to worry about the fire. Yeah. And I mean, like, even if it's Fox, you can still just do the Armada, like, shine timing. Like, and just hit, like, the fair. Like, hit on the Oh. Top. Yeah, I haven't really thought about that, honestly. That's crazy shine. Oops. Okay, okay. Ooh, nice. I like how you're pressuring him, like, his landings a lot more. Like, you're attacking him when he's on the platform, and when he's, like, about to reach it, it's, like, much better. Oh, I tried to get under that. <laughs> See, by drifting away just a bit, we don't get hit by the scary out-of-shield moves. That makes sense. Yeah. And then you, like, covered the diagonal. Oh, you went for the... You even did the grounded needles. Nice. Wow. Hey, we're going to have enough time for another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> just save up. Um... Oh. Q one more. Yeah, I felt good. What's what did what what felt good with uh, what felt good for you? I think I I think my movement felt very comfortable that game, and I felt like I was engaging with the ideas that I wanted to use really well. So like I was trying to back air uh, a lot. I was trying to like space properly, and um, I think I was trying to nair out a shield when I when I had the opportunity. I felt like I was doing all three of those things like really well. Mm -hmm. um, um also i've been trying to like um i think there was this kind of like era in my tech chasing where um where after you gave me that initial advice it was going really well for a while and then i think i got kind of in my head for some reason and it, i stopped being able to tech chase for like a few weeks and i've been trying to like relax and focus on like new things um and that's or focus on like a new thing that Sunsei had told me, which is like just like slow it down a little bit. You're like reacting too soon, and um, tech chasing has gotten a lot better lately, and that feels nice when that's hitting. Yeah, no, like it's tech chasing is really about rhythm. Yeah, and I think I have a new way to like. I've been trying like a new way of like looking at the screen, kind of when I tech chase. I try to. I think I tried to explain to you like a long time ago. This like peripheral mode I try to go into that like really helps me hit it. Instead yeah, of like shake. really, yeah, starting to like analyze the. Instead of analyzing the screen. Um. Just like almost like zoning out, and it really, and just focusing on that screen movement, helps a ton. Mm-hmm. 
One small thing. I noticed when you're, like, at the end of your combo, you're going for, like, short hop, like, fair in the corner directly for the finisher. Um, if they're already in the corner and they're, like, dealing with your offense, it's okay to just look for the forward tilt there. Like, forward tilt, up, like, the pop-up into fair. Because that still gives you, like, the good fin the good ending. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I could just have smashed with it. I try to shy away from ground needles when they're at that angle, because it only covers one thing, and they can still, like, vary it. It's really yeah. inconsistent, in my opinion. Did not do that on purpose. <laughs> this guy just was like, all right, there's only one way I come back. All the cheese. <laughs> He's like, Nair, double shine, let's go. Oh, nice, you got the garage cancel. Nice. Oh, that's that's a. If I hold in there, I think it works better. Yeah. The holdout is more just for like avoiding near shines at like low damage, like low to yeah. mid damage. At the eventually, usually it's it's almost always correct to like do um, to do like um in. Um, it's just, yeah, like, like this, in this game, there are still exemptions and fringe things, so it's just, yeah, I just want to acknowledge them a little bit. Oh, he jumped. I'm so sure he was going to stay in shield. Okay. All right, we held oh. it down. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is just unranked, too, now. Play one more with this person. And then our fox friend should be there. Yeah. Looks like he just messaged me. I've been trying to get over my fear of ledge dashing after some stuff Zane told me. I've been trying to work on it a little more and just like not get frustrated when I miss it and die. Just be like, yep. Do you do At least down I went for it. Do you do down forward? Yeah. Okay, good. The thing with ledge dashing is that there's kind of like two important, like aside from down forward, um, there's like kind of like two pieces of like, there's two components of the timing and like how you do well on the first one kind of like determines how you can like fix it on the second one. So like, if you are a little late on your jump, you can kind of like use a, a, like a gentler angle, like you don't have to do as sharp, uh, as sharp an angle. Um, and that can help you not like bonk your head and die. Mm -hmm. But if you do get a fast jump, then like I like perf like a, a, like a close to perfect, if not perfect, like double jump. Um, then what you want to do is you actually want a sharp angle when you're coming in on the ledge, because like you want to just barely get over and then immediately snap to the surface. So it's like, yeah, there's kind of a range in terms of the angles. It might not be a bad idea, especially if you're still get if you're frustrated and still getting used to it, to just use gentler angles to start. And then like sharpen them as you get more comfortable with the motion. Like you don't necessarily have to like go for like max galint, but something a little okay. bit more like manageable. Like, you know, like there's nothing wrong with six, seven. That's totally reasonable. Oh wow. Gosh. This guy shields off. I should grab more. Mm-hmm. Or just pressure his shield. Like, we can just... We can totally... Like, he's shielding in the corner. There's nothing stopping us from just, like, fairing his shield and stuff. And doing this stuff. Man, I hate down tilt. <laughs> It's kind of like our thing, and then he's like just he's taking it from us. It's like you're yeah, out, you're outranging my move with the tilt. That's my like my whole thing. How dare you?
No. Oh, great spacing there. Let's go. No. Forgot my percent, and then I fucking fall for it. <laughs> GG's. <laughs> You're so... You do not like this person. I, I think I know who they are. Who do you think so, they are? One, one second, one second. No worries. No, it's okay. I'm just, sorry. I'm just on a call with someone right now, but... Yeah. Kirby Kaze. Oh! He's... Yo, what up? <laughs> That's Slime. Hey, Slime! Kirby Kaze says hi. <laughs> um... Okay, so I'm going to search for my friend. Yep. Um, oh, 441. Whoops. Um, okay. Yep, I can see things. Who's the fox? This is Kohensky. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. The man, the myth, the legend. Yep. Okay, so ledge dash fox. How do you find dealing with ledge dash hard? Or uh, no, it's okay. I think I just respect it for the most part, and I think that's whoops. grab there more. I think when I do that like desperate dash attack at high percent like the fast one, the better players shield most of the time. I think the biggest thing there was just how you did the edge guard. Yeah. Because like you could have like, the thing is if Fox is like, just started his up B and you're holding the ledge um, and you're already on the ledge you always have enough time to do a refresh. Oh. It's Nice. Great idea with the up air. Like that was the that was the move that like the payoff move. Try crouch canceling after up tilt. Okay. Cause like up tilt has insane in interruptible frames. So like you should be able to transition to it like basically immediately. Like, you don't even necessarily oh. need to do the second move. At this percent, you probably should, but, like, if you're at, lo like, lower, just try CCing after up tilt. Okay. Oh. And he's just waiting for us to, like, come up and then hitting us. Yeah. 
trust the trust my trust my crouch dash. If he CCs that down CCs down tilts after you land from the aerial is also a good time to do it. Like at low uh, if you're at low damage too. Okay. Like really a good way to think of crouch. If he ever likes to do like an attack that like wouldn't like a, a counter attack that's kind of like that just like kind of barely works. Crouch canceling is often like very very good. Like especially if it's a counter attack after you do something, CC is often very good in those spots. Well, I didn't think that up air would let him tech. That's why I wanted to go for that. Hmm. Yeah, we need to get more comfortable with stalling the uh, like refreshing because you want to be intangible when Fox is coming up at you. So okay. if he takes an aggressive angle, you he just like passes through you. Yep. Yep. And I somehow lost my jump. Just come out. Oh. There. I thought I could see. Uh, if I do it away, that's probably that's where I need to do it away. Mm -hmm. Don't worry too much about. Don't worry too much about that. Like again, like Fox is a lot of mix-ups, so it is conceivable that he'll you know he'll win some of these. Oh, that was on accident. <laughs> that one was on accident. He just lingered. So goofy. I tried to get out of the way, like you said. With yeah, the, you did. The it was perfect. Diagram. It was perfect. Now you got an anti-air down tilt out of it, and that's awesome. And then he died. Nice. No, oh man. 
So are you just not sure that he's going to do that? No, I, I, I was sure. I just thought the angle on the needle was good. You don't lose anything. If you see him, like, moving past it, though, you don't lose anything by just down smashing. Like, if you confirm the needle missed, like, just down, like, just do something, you know what I mean? Because, like, yeah, we have to, con like, we have to confirm the needles, like, what the needles did. And if they didn't, if they didn't hit him, then we have to get ready for the next step of the edge guard. Okay, Puss. He let me back. Very nice of him. Like, edge guards aren't really about, like, reads or anything most of the time. They're more about just making, like, a wall and, like, covering the important zones. It's, like, a very, very procedural part of the game. Okay. A lot of people, like, kind of, like, get it wrong because they think that they have to like cover specific options but like a good process is way more important for edge guarding than like yeah being good at than being good at the things that are important in combat yeah just desperate at the end fuck that's uh okay procedure yeah so, like, basically, the needles cover one zone. If they go to a different one, like, they go lower, then you just deal with the next step, the next set of options. And eventually, you know, ideally, he dies. Like, eventually, he had, he doesn't have any swear he can go other than dying. Good idea. Good idea on like doing that um kind of like delayed recovery. I think you're I think I think you're trying to rush it. You're I think you're trying to rush. Okay. Remember, your character you're chic. You don't really you don't have to rush if you don't want to. I think I can... You think you can? I think I can re- like, I, I'm trying to react to the side B there on that one edge guard by like hitting him, but I realize like when he's- I think I need to also acknowledge that when he's below the edge, I can just hold instead yeah. of like trying to squeak out of back air. Confirm height. Confirm height and then decide what you're going to do. There you go.
It's going for like some stupid backer, I think. He tipped me. Yeah. That's all. That, I think that I feel like that's all because I'm like rushing the dash attack. Like, um, I think I need to trust my boost grab more often. Like when I'm tech chasing, instead of trying to get the dash attack to pop them up. Yeah. Dash attack pop up works around like 55, 60. So like if you're going for it at like 30, yeah, like you're 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 adding counter like opportunities for them to have counterplay. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> it's, uh, less good, less good. But that, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I read him. I was like, he's, he doesn't stay in place very often after I do that, so. Yep. Down. Do you ever jab reset, or do you find that they just like get out of it too much? Still invincible. That's my secret. I'm always invincible, Fox McCloud. <laughs> it is a secret. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking way. Stit. When he's like that, when he's that far away from us and we're shielding, we don't. We can just like go over a shield, if especially if he commits to a jump that's kind of like far. And we're and we can just do what with our shield? Sorry. Well, we just release shield. Okay. Because like, you could also wave dash down, but like a lot of times he's like dr doing his back ears in the spot he thinks you're going to wave dash into um, okay. when you're in the corner. So what I'm saying is just let go of your shield so you can have access to your forward tilt and other goodies again. Try to actually hit him with, like, the back here when you're doing your edge guards. Like, try to, like, instead of, like, ma waiting for him to, like, fly into you, try to cut mm -hmm. him off, try to cut him off, like, closer with your, like, ledge hop, with your invincible back airs and stuff. Or just offstage back air in general. Okay. Like, be more aggressive with it. Because, like, yeah, he's, he's getting away with, like, so much. He missed all of those. That's kind of a weird angle. Like, Fox lasers have such weird, like, they have a weird heights, I feel. Nice. Okay. Yeah. See, that needle forced him to, like, jump later, so then you could just hog him. Oh, no. I tricked myself. He took ledge after the last time I did that, so I just pre-panicked, kind of. Yeah. 
I mean, you went for like a, you went for something and just mixed, and just missed the angle. Goofy. Oops. See, I would even like gone. I would have actually attacked him like sooner. Gone out further. Yeah, I would have gone out of like right away. You're invincible. Like, what is he gonna do? You're invincible and you're chic. Like two of the deadliest things in the game. <clears throat> Too, too greedy. Oh. He's good. Just keeps getting me with the same fucking dash attack. Uh, let's take. Let's take a minute. Okay, after this game, we'll take a minute. Sorry, I queued it before you said something. No, no, no. Well, if you queued it before I said something, then how would I... What sense does it make to blame you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Uh -oh. Besides, like, what happens? Like, if you say, no, I actually feel really good. Like, I know I sound, like, a salty, but, like, you know, I'm actually feeling really good with my mental. I think I can play another one. You say that, like, what? Like, is that a problem? No. There we go. Get out of here. Okay. That was, that was funny. See, I would have looked for ledge hop near there when he went below the stage. Okay. Because then it just hits him and forces him below the stage and we kill him. Like, it okay. forces him to, like, have to be below, like, like below the stage line, and then we just do the edge guard. Remember, if you are invincible and the opponent has to, like, jump near the ledge, like, double jump near the ledge or play near the ledge, you're, you can just throw your body with a hitbox into like wherever into their pathway or at them, and there's nothing they can really do about it as long as you have this, the ledge invincibility. I think that that's like the biggest hole that I'm seeing that's missing from your, like your gameplay right now. Like you're not really like using the ledge invincibility. It looks like you're honestly like afraid of it. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm just, I'm very intimidated by, like, being late and getting traded, but I guess that's, that's like, a same as the ledge dashing in general, like, just have to start trying. Yeah, like, you're invincible, like, as long as you, as long as you, like, let go of the edge in a timely fashion upon grabbing it, you should be invincible. Like, there's no risk, assuming that you, like, nail it, there's no risk, and, again, half a second is a very long time, because remember, we don't have, like, the lag of a waveland, so, like, Ledge hop aerials are so much easier than ledge dashing. Ledge dashing is like eight times harder than like doing the this type of stuff that I'm telling you to do. I saw you moving out of the way like with the platform. That was really well done. I just question oh. if we. I question if we need to be up airing at like 103 with Fox on Dreamland. Like I'd just be hitting him off the side. Okay. So I mean, he's light. He die. Like if he doesn't di perfectly, he just dies. And if he dies perfectly, we get an edge guard anyway. Yeah, just gonna grab there. Or down smash. Down smash is good there. Remember, he just, like, teched, so he can't tech again. So, like, if you confirm that he's rolling to the edge and you go for down smash, then, like, that's really good. Timing wasn't ideal on the back air, but I still think you can kind of see what I mean. Like, because you were able to, like, stay on the edge and force him to, like, go above you. That meant, like, when you finished, you were on stage, so you were able to, like, play the next position, like, effectively. Okay. So you still, like, got something out of following him along. 
even when it wasn't done like ideally because you could have just hit that back here and killed him but because you stayed in front of him that meant you weren't fighting him in the corner where you can potentially die like everything is much better like positionally it's just so much sturdier Get out right now. Oh no, Fox. Another one for me? Oh. <laughs> that was like, that was nasty. Let's go. It's fun. Yep. Something I notice when you when you're up a lot, you start to neglect your like important hits, like your tilts, and you're like you start doing a lot of aerials and stuff, but you can kind of neglect your like grab and tilts a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I think I do. Cause I think you're trying to be like ultra safe, but like the thing is, is like I mean that makes sense. Like we want to limit limit risk, but like. We still want to use our good moves, like our, our most like impactful options when the opportunities present themselves. Uh, just got turn, turn around, down smash. Sometimes you just got to do the easy one. Okay. Like there's nothing wrong with just like hitting him off stage, even if it's not the ideal angle. Just like keep him, just keep him recovering. Nice. All right, one more, and then we'll debrief. Okay. I really like how you're using your crouch cancel, though. It's so much cleaner from where you started. Like, I can see you using it, like, a little... I still think that, like, up tilt until just hold down is, like, insane. I'm pretty sure that's, like, actually the JMOOC. That boost grab in? No, the um, up tilt and then crouch cancel. <laughs> JMOOC is so good at crouch canceling. Oh, yeah. Dude, I just need to take blood. I, I got scared, but I had time. Yeah. I think you need a method of taking the ledge. I think you need yeah. one that one that you're like, I think you need one from the air. Usually that's reverse needle store, like short off reverse needle store um, back here or like edge grab. Mm -hmm. Like that's common. The other one that's like really good is it's like old school, but I'm a fan of just like dash it, like running forward, crouch, like dash for like dash dance, wave dash, wave dash back kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Like, but yeah, we need a, we need a method of grabbing the edge, whatever it is. Like there's a million ways to do it, but like, 
We just need something we can do on command that's like relatively consistent and, and straightforward. That doesn't require like, you know, it, uh, we don't want like the the name of the game is like pick something that like is the least like none thing ever. Like something that n Ed would never do, and we're gonna probably <laughs> pick that one. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like something boring and that's like very efficient and like doesn't look cool. But like no. works consistently for grabbing the edge. Like we want that. I can't believe he scooped me. Fuck. It's a game. Oh, so annoying sometimes. I know, but we just right. won the last two. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I think that like, yeah, the biggest takeaway that I see on my end in terms of just like what we want to be doing is we want to be cleaning up our ledge invincibility plays. So I'm gonna say that like for key takeaways, um, I'm gonna say learn how far learn. How far off stage can how far off stage can Sheik go with invincible back with invincible double jump bat bear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Note. Um, okay. Note. We want with fast fall, with fast fall um, edge release, and without fall and without fast fall edge release. Because that changes your range, right? Like, whether you fast fall or not changes your range, like, pretty tremendously. Um, do, no, learn. Uh, when running towards ledge, ledge, um, more than battlefield, um, from behind, from behind battlefield platform. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, from behind, no, from before, um, when running towards edge before reaching battlefield platform, um, BF side flat, uh, be able to transition to edge grab, into edge grab, into efficient edge grab motion. How is up to you? Um, learn, and then when running towards, when running towards ledge, or actually, no, when standing, uh, within two character lengths character lengths away from ledge be able to transition into efficient edge grab motion and again like how you do it is like up to you and then for do it's just um yeah be um more aggression with no more like um focus ledge hop aerial edge guard more toward like um more towards interception and cutting off angles um do honestly like everything that you've got like c um using cc um bracket utilt into crouch two uh plus finishing combos with fair for um over down smash where possible where possible, and then I think that we also talked about uh, what did we do today? I think that's it in terms of this. Like, this is what I've got. What does it look like? How does this look to you? This is great. Yeah, this is a uh, similar to. I'm writing some of these things down in, in my notebook as well. I mean, these uh, as we went. The through. needle thing. The needle thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 So do um needles uh hit full like um yeah use the full um. On opponent respawn, respawn. Mm -hmm. uh, br uh, use needles to uh, get rid of. No, um, use standing needles more. No hit. No hit. No, um, shoot them with standing needles <clears throat> more as with punish or uh, yeah, as with as with punish or follow up from aerial. Because again, like they usually, if you tap them with a spaced aerial, they're usually thinking you're gonna look for some kind of like grab follow up, um, especially like that low, because it just solves all our low mm -hmm. percent problems. So then we just like punish yeah. them with needles instead, and then they're at twenty eight, and we're fine. Yeah, I think aside from that, that's what I've got. 
Uh, how do you feel this went, and um, is there anything that you want to go over quickly before we call it? Um, nothing to go over before we're done. Um, I think this is, this was good. Um, yeah, there's a lot more, like, gameplay-orientated things this week, which is nice. I think I can try, uh, just try these. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like, we um, covered mindset last time, so it makes sense, I think, that we now... And I think that, like, from the sounds of it, you're doing a lot better with mindset, and, you know, it's not, it's not, like, you know, perfect or, like, it's not perfect yet, but, like, that's kind of the point. It'll, it yeah, never, the journey's never over. Yeah, it's sure. never perfect. If we were perfect, we're done. So, but now, but because we had such a good, like, session there, I think it makes sense that we're now, like, branching off of it again. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'm good to, good to go. Um, one thing i did want to check in was uh meeting next tuesday if possible yeah sure same time uh would you be able to do an hour earlier like at like two your time i don't see anything on the clock next uh next week at tuesday at two so that is yeah that should be fine okay great perfect That's i'll perfect see you then time. and i'll let you go but take care and always a pleasure yeah yeah Thank you again. Uh, I'll talk to you next week. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Peace.